Mr. Tan, could you just tell us uh, why you decided to come down to Kodong Pasir today? Well, I think this is just part of the route because I've been in the east all this while, so we come to the central part. Uh, and then tomorrow we go to the west and the north. Do you think you can count on a significant proportion of uh, voters in Kolong Pase to vote for you considering that it used to be opposition stronghold? Well, I think uh, I look forward to a lot of support from everywhere, not just opposition stronghold. Yeah. Um, could I just ask, uh, yesterday at your rally, you also said that uh, you have met every milestone. Yeah. In um, all the places you've gone to. That's right. Um, but I guess you didn't have time to elaborate. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to use this chance to elaborate further on the three places that you did not? I think it's not necessary to go through, uh, go through every one of it. So um, I've just covered the major ones. So I suppose, I suppose the the writer wanted to know my experience in financial sector, whether how relevant and how. Uh, how it could be related to the job that I'm doing. But actually, they should just look at the Presidential Elections Committee's decision, which is that, that uh, it is very clearly stated that they think that I have the experience to manage the financial affairs of the President. So I think that's, they have gone through, they have gone through my, my performance. So I think uh, we will just leave at that. There is no point in going through every every company, every department, so... If, if you don't want to go through every yeah. company, department, could you at least describe how it was like in those three companies? You know, was it successful? Was it well, it was successful. It was successful. You know, a person throughout his career, life experience, he changes interests and all that to do different things. So that is what happened to me too at a certain stage in my life. Uh, decided that to leave the public service, uh, the civil service, and go into banking and after being banking for investment banking for seven years, I decided to go into asset management because that was the in thing and the government wanted to promote Singapore as an asset management center, fine management center. That is why I thought I heeded the government's call and went into asset management. Um, after seven years, I've been, I have been seven years investing, five in Morgan Grenfell, two, nearly two and a half in Peregrine, so about time to move. So it's not too short a time to be investment banking. Seven years, Seven, more than seven years, and then went into to asset management. So, I this thing, when I first joined Mon Grenfell, um, there wasn't there wasn't this great government call to go into asset management. So, and during the time that I moved there was, and I thought I should give it a chance to support government's effort to develop Singapore as a fund management center. So I make a move. As for your time in Standard Chartered, will you also use the term successful? Well, I think it was a bit brief, uh, uh, maybe 20 months or so. So I had that uh, in... Uh, it was also successful. I had... Uh, let me see. I helped them to get a, a major fixed income deal uh, from a major company, listed company in Singapore during that time. So I have managed to chalk up also a milestone there. Okay. Being different. Did he? Did he say that? When did he say that? Just, uh, <laughs> I think an hour. Ago. An hour ago. Mm. Well, I think I think basically it's in line with the the mission of the elected president. The whole idea, the part, the intention of parliament actually is to have checks and balances uh, on the government. It is very clear. So I'm not I'm out of bounds in that sense. <laughs> yeah. So just one more question. Yeah. You said that you welcome support from all parties, yeah, yeah. but you know, still it's pretty significant that this is Podum Passe, a very well-known opposition stronghold. Yeah. Do you rate your chances well? Well, I think I rate my chances well too. I mean, I wouldn't want to see this contest, presidential contest as between government and opposition. I think we are beyond that already. Two, three months ago, the Sing Singaporeans have voted for the government that they wanted. That has been settled. Now we are looking for a president to improve the workings of government. So, and it is in that spirit, I seek the vote, the support of everybody, not just opposition wards. Uh, you hold a press conference tomorrow night at yeah. the House. Yeah. What can we expect from that? Well, I basically to to uh, round up and to see whether there are any other points that the uh, because I held my rally quite early, 
I had uh, two, three days in advance, so the others would hold them later than me. So there might be new points, and I think it is uh, that I should hold one to just answer any queries that you have. And then, uh, because, because after that I've got no chance to re reply, cooling off day, so I thought I should reply at night after listening to what Mr. Khan Kinyan has to say tonight and what, uh, I think, when is Dr. Chan Shimo holding his tonight? <coughs> Tomorrow night. Not concurrently with your press conference. Oh, I see. And Dr. Tony Tan is has just held one, isn't it? Yes, this, I thought he was. Some, some no, I I don't I don't really know what he said. Uh, it's, about, uh, it's time Singapore had a new president. Won't we will have a new president before long? Is it? A new president. Yeah. Female. Female. Female, female president. Yeah. And, and he, he he thinks that he will be a president for all Singaporeans. Yeah. Your yeah. message. Mm. Political leaders should be important and Singapore needing a wise experience and state yeah. president. Mm. Do you have any comments? Or? Well, as far as female president is concerned, I have no discrimination on any sex or gender. So if some a female comes up, why not? If he if Singaporeans want her to be the president, why not? So one of the speakers at uh, Dr. Tan's rally this yeah. afternoon uh, was the president of the Unifem. She actually uh, took Uni? Uni Unifem. Oh, uh, Unifem. She kind of uh, took aim at uh, you and Dr. Tan Ching Bok yeah. slightly for some comments you made at TUC Forum. I think for you it was about some comments about how women can afford to, to go back to their yeah. housewives eventually or something like that. Yeah. Anything to say? Like that? Well, I, do, I don't know what she is. It was she or she. she I mean, she did not quite like... Oh, I see. Well, I think women should have a choice. Uh, some women do really like to have children. And I think because of the demands of a uh, cost of living and all that, decided to have to stay in the workplace. Uh, I think I know a lot of women. You should ask Dr. Tony Tan's wife, you know. She has... Uh, yeah. And I think uh, we have... Um, a, uh, uh, we have a situation where cost of living is really weighing on a lot of people's my young couple's mind and if you really want to have a, a good standard of living you find that you have to, both both husband and wife have to work um, in order to be able to afford the nice things in life for the family for children but I think we should also have a situation where only one person works and still can earn enough for, for, for the children to, to enjoy the good things in life and let the women have a choice I'm not saying that uh, get a woman to go and become housewife, but they should have a choice. And I think the the, the choice is quite limited now with a double income family, which is a necessity. But was it a choice for you, Mrs. Tan? <laughs> Since you used to work and now you're a housewife now, right? Yes, I'm a housewife now. Yeah, yeah, so homemaker. So was it your choice? I mean, to well, we discussed it together, and then we decided that maybe I should be the homemaker. Okay. okay. Uh, you thought that single income was enough. Uh, at the stage of our lives, yes.